You're listening to the Sales Success Stories podcast, where we deconstruct world-class sales performers to provide insights and strategies to help you improve. To learn more, visit us at top1.fm. Here's your host, Scott Ingram. Today on the Sales Success Stories podcast, because of how popular they've been, I've decided to keep sharing stories from the book, Sales Success Stories, 60 Stories from 20 Top 1% Sales Professionals, which you can find all of the details about at top1.fm forward slash book. The story I'm going to share today is actually my own personal favorite story, at least the way it came out for the audiobook, and that is story number 53 by David Weiss titled, The Year I Doubled My Income. There are so many great lessons packed into this story, and most importantly, I think it shows that no matter how good you are, you can always be better. Here, give a listen for yourself. This is David Weiss recording a story around the year I doubled my income. Imagine for a second, you are, at least in your mind, the best at something. And up to this point in your life, mostly you've been proven correct. That was me, basking in my glorious ignorance. I had done some amazing things, and I had been living a sales career I was proud of. I would made consistent multi-six-figure incomes, hit or exceeded plan every year at every company I'd been part of, won multiple presidents clubs, some of the best destinations in the world. I've hired and trained people who have hit their goals and taken on initiatives that have helped shape the strategy and culture of multiple organizations. I thought I was elite. I thought I had the sales thing figured out. Boy, was I wrong. At this point in my career, it was rare for me to get pushed and pushed hard on my sales ability. After all, I was successful and working in senior-level sales roles at a Fortune 500 company. I've read many books on sales, and as I mentioned in my other story, been trained by some great people and companies. After Aramark, which I mentioned in my last story, I went on to CareerBuilder, which has been consistently ranked as one of the best companies to sell for, with the best training, as has this Fortune 500 company I was working for at the time. However, along came a leader who flipped my world upside down. When Gregory Donovan was first assigned to my team, I took the approach of, who's this new guy and what can he do for me? As I get older, wiser, and frankly realize how stupid I am, I've learned that it's important to allow people to challenge me. And this person did, like no other. He had been a successful enterprise salesperson for years, started his own company and sold it, and was well-connected with heads of sales at some huge companies. He quickly showed me I had much more room to grow. Let me be humbly honest. There are times in sales or in anything where you experience much success and you get complacent. You expect that your sales career or your career in general will keep going, because why wouldn't it? You forget that to get where you've gotten, you had to earn it daily. Not only did Gregory smack that reality back into me, but he showed me how much more I could be doing and in turn, how much more I could be making. He quickly, and in a really, you know, rather kind of stoic way, showed me he was the master and I was the student, and he painted a new reality for me I had to achieve. Okay, so how did he, you know, shake my foundation? Oddly enough, it was easier than I thought possible. He simply asked me during one of our goal-setting meetings, how much money do you want to make this fiscal? I told him what I thought was a pretty solid number, And he laughed at me in a kind of encouraging way and said, you're better than that. I challenged him because that's what I do, because I thought the number I'd given him was a good number. I remember this moment because a weird emotion hit me when he told me I could do more. And it was part anger, like, how do you question me? I already do so much. What can doing more really achieve? Or, you know, law of diminishing returns. There was also some fear in there around maybe I'm not as good as I think I am. Honestly, I didn't believe him. I didn't know how to do more than I was, or seeing how doing more would even translate into more. With a a very simple question, he shined a light on a a blind spot of mine. What followed was almost a discovery session, similar to what we should be putting all of our clients through. Again, we were new to our relationship together, so he sought to understand everything I was doing. He already had some idea, and to get me to explain my process, he learned everything about how I worked, what I did. And at the end, as he already kind of knew the answer, he said, you're good, but you can do more. 
And I simply said, how? Let's take a pause here. I'm going to leave you with some very important things in this uh, next paragraph. And I'll get to exactly how to make changes that will impact you forever. More important, though, in order to learn this knowledge, you must be coachable. I'm not the only person Gregory asked this information of and gave this information to. But I am the one who took the coaching and ran with it. I've always believed that if you want to be the best, you need to be open to learning. You need to be humble, to seek people better than you, and be open to getting a punch of reality. I would argue that the most important thing a salesperson needs to be in their career is coachable. Okay, so let's resume. Uh, How would I double my income? He told me some obvious stuff. It was clear I needed to prospect more, so he challenged me to figure that out. I needed to up my game by building better business cases and pushing for tighter executive alignment and validation of the business case for change. And this would lead to deeper discovery sessions, discovery that takes, frankly, twice as long as a presentation to follow. However, most important, he would teach me a new methodology that changed my game forever. This was called MedPick. So what do these seven letters that will change your life in sales mean? M, first one, metrics. That's the business case. Think of hard dollars, real value, no fluff, and improvements in KPI that your solution brings to justify change. This is an actual mathematical equation, not a guess, not based on other folks' data, real data from the client you're working with. So that's M. The next is E. E stands for the economic buyer. That's who can spend money, has budget, more importantly, can create budget and can sign a contract. The next is decision criteria. Essentially, what is their wish list? What items will you be measured on and need to achieve to earn their business? The next D is decision process. Who is involved? When do they want to make a decision? When do they want to go live? The next is the P, paper process. What is the legal process a company will go through? Who are the people involved? How long does it take them to review, redline, give approval for signature? This is critical to making sure your deals close on time. Identify pain. What are the real issues, goals, and outcomes? This goes along with metrics. It helps solidify the why change message, where metrics are more of the business case. Identify pain is more of kind of the, the explanation, almost the emotional or personal side of, of the issues going on. The following two are C's. One of them is champions, who will give you inside information and most importantly, sell for you when you are not there. And the last one, competition. Who are they? What differentiates you from them? What landmines can you set? Things along those lines. Know your competition well. The uh, above criteria color-coded. So red, yellow, green. So your job in the sales process is to uncover all of those, typically as fast as you can. Red is information, simply, you just don't know. So that's your gap. That's where you got to go ask questions around. Yellow is information you know some of, but it might not be validated. So share it, your thoughts with on these items with your clients and get them to validate them. Green means you are 100% confident. It is complete. It is validated by the client. This is, it's real. Now you may be saying to yourself, David, this stuff is obvious. And yeah, it it is. It was for me when I first saw it too. I mean, these are things that you should be getting. However, I went back and applied it to the deals I was working on. Then I applied it to the ones I had lost. And then I applied it to the ones I had won. Let's just say my mind was blown. Out of over 50 opportunities across a $20 million pipeline, I didn't win a single deal that still had MedPick criteria in the red. And all the deals I had won, the criteria was in green. Had I known this before, I would have won much more business. Now I challenge you, as I was challenged, pick a deal you're working on. Write out the seven letters, M-E-D-D-P-I-C-C, and be honest with filling in the information. I bet you anything that you have red and yellow all over it. How much green is really there? So I'll pause here. 
Seriously, go do this. I'm waiting. Now, go do it on the, on the last deal you lost. And then go do it on the last deal you won. Look, you're welcome. <laughs> Again, we're all at different stages of our sales development. But this here will change your life. It will show you your blind spots, help you prepare for meetings, and will help you win more. It is a race to get these green faster than your competition and uncover this information that your competition won't. Whoever gets all this information the fastest in the most complete fashion will often win. Now, nothing is guaranteed in this world. You could do everything right and still lose. However, using this methodology will increase your chance of winning dramatically. To wrap this up, seek people who can make you better. Shout out again to Gregory Donovan. Thank you, sir. And thanks uh, for everything, Greg. You seriously have changed my life. Now, be coachable. Don't be lazy. And guys, use MedPick. I guess it's no surprise that the audiobook is outselling the other formats of the book five to one. If you haven't picked up your copy yet, I hope you will. I promise you'll thank me for it once you've had a chance to read or listen to the rest of these stories. Again, you can find links to everything and details on an additional special offer at top1.fm forward slash book. While you're there, be sure to join the mailing list. When you do, you'll receive instructions on how to request a video from the Sales Success Summit. If you like David's story and you're at all interested in MedPick, then I'd recommend his presentation on sales process, building your own formula for success where he goes into some really great detail. David was also featured in episode 24 if you're like me and you just can't get enough inspiration and wisdom from David Weiss. For the next sample story, I want to share your favorite. If you've read or listened to the book, send me a note and tell me which story has impacted you the most. I'll share the resulting favorite here in two weeks. In fact, I might just share a series of favorites. So send me a note to scott at top1.fm and let me know. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week with a pretty incredible SDR interview. This individual has been a consistent star, and we'll even talk about how he managed to book 69 qualified meetings in a single month. We'll see you then. Thanks for listening to the Sales Success Stories podcast. To be sure you never miss an episode and for an invitation to our sales success community powered by Influitive, subscribe to our newsletter at top1.fm. 